Our question this week comes from Donald Ray, who sent us photos of an odd substance in his garden. Well, Donald is not the first gardener to find this slimy growth and reach out to us with a question, but it really isn't anything to be concerned about. This is slime mold, and we often see it in gardens, especially in mulched beds and paths that may be staying a little too wet. In the heat of summer, when we aren't getting any rain, that usually means that the area is being over-irrigated or might be in an area with a broken pipe or busted sprinkler head. Slime molds are unique creatures that don't fit into any categories that we're familiar with. Although they have fungus-like characteristics, they aren't fungi. They exist in nature as a blob and are often bright yellow and even sometimes red. Their preferred food source is bacteria, so they aren't feeding on your plants. They occur when there's a high relative humidity, ample moisture for organic matter to decay, and warm temperatures. Although they are unsightly, they're not harmful to humans or animals. And they'll run their course fairly quickly, so there's no need to do anything about them. At most, simply remove and toss them in the garbage or compost pile, or just break them up with a rake or a strong jet of water. Our plant of the week is bearded iris, since early fall, at least four to six weeks before the first hard freeze, is the perfect time for both planting and maintaining these lovely perennials. Plant in open garden areas with at least 68 hours of full sun, preferably morning sun. If planted in too much shade, bearded iris will grow quite happily but won't bloom well. Well-drained soil is important, as these plants grow from succulent underground stems called rhizomes, which will rot if the soil stays too wet. When planting, place the rhizome very close to the top of the soil, placing them anywhere from 8 to 12 inches apart in width. The closer together they're planted, the more massive the effect, but also the sooner they'll get overcrowded and need to be dug and divided. And if yours have become crowded and perhaps even stopped blooming, Early fall is also the perfect time to divide and fertilize them. As with most plants that have underground stems, bearded irises are sensitive to being overwatered, so err on the side of dryness, irrigating deeply and infrequently, especially in summer. Various conoclinium species, which used to be known as Eupatorium, bloom most heavily in fall. They're guaranteed to attract a butterfly crowd like this queen on Amy Acosta Welch's Conoclinium gregii. And at the Giving Garden of Carrollton, bees love borage flowers. Laura Margadana tells us that in North Dallas, they direct sow borage seeds a week or two before the average last frost. In 2017, they planted on March 20th, but also borage reseeds, so she gets volunteers from previous years too. She's also started seeds in peat pots to transplant. In Austin, Farah Rivera from Serafina and the Festival Beach Community Garden says that they plant transplants of borage in March, but some gardeners start them indoors in January and February. We'd love to hear from you, so please visit centraltexasgardener.org to send us your questions, pictures, and videos. Mm -hmm.